Hey there, welcome back to Turntable Guy. Uh, hopefully uh, you had an opportunity to view the initial video for this turntable, which I just did outside for fun, uh, showing the original condition had, as it came in. It uh, was extremely filthy. Uh, I spent a good portion of uh, this morning going through it and uh, giving it a wipe down and uh, just cleaning up, you know, most of the... Uh, dirt it's actually like dirt dirt so i got most of that off i uh i got my air compressor and uh gave this thing a good uh blowout got rid of most of the dust and stuff um believe it or not this is this is actually washed um the platter mat here uh it looks like from what i can tell it's latex paint throughout it all these little specks um, they come off with the scrubbing and, and they're, they're on the plinth as well. Um, and the more you, the more you clean it, the more they come off. It's not a huge deal, but this has been cleaned once. And, uh, one thing I did notice here is that, um, the, uh, center, uh, chrome centerpiece here has the original, um, plastic wrap on it. So if you look here, you can just see it starting to peel up. So... When we're done the turntable, done the service and everything, we'll peel that up uh, to reveal uh, almost like I guess like brand new shiny uh, new Marantz logo on here. So that'll be that'll be nice. So we'll do that last. And this has got to be washed at least two or three more times to uh, loosen and remove, you know, the existing. Uh, there's still dirt in it and uh, the uh, the latex paint. So anyway, that was hit with a. With uh, just uh, some uh, degreaser, cleaner, and uh, a toothbrush. So, but there's still a lot more cleaning to do. Uh, the platter itself has been cleaned fairly well. Hey, why aren't you coming out there? Here? Um, got a toothbrush all through these uh, strobe markings here. It came out uh, really good. So I'm happy with this. And uh, where the belt rides here is very clean. So uh, this is this is pretty much good to go. I might hit it with some alcohol just to remove any grease or whatever around here. Uh, but other than that, that turned out well. That aside, and here we are. Here's the plant. So I got out all the uh, disgusting belt uh, death um, from over here and uh, cleaned this entire area up with a with a mild degreaser. Like I said, it uh, lifted up a lot of actual dirt. And uh, again, toothbrush, scrubbing, scrubbing everywhere. Um, did the arm, the arm has some latex paint on it as well, as does the uh, counterweight here. Uh, one thing I have noticed, I'm gonna pull these off anyway for the servicing. I don't have the lid for this thing. There is no dust cover. Um, the guy who owns it uh, may have one custom built, or I mentioned to him that uh, a dust cover from uh, uh, any CEC turntable, like a Hitachi, Yamaha, uh, with the that has this style of um, uh, hinge but usually there's a little slot that goes in and it just shifts over um, it should work so um, he's going to keep an eye out for uh, Hitachi or Yamaha or whatever other brand that CEC made because this is a CEC turntable so um, what we're going to do today is uh, we're just going to have a look at uh, the way it's actually operating right now. Like I said, I have noticed that uh, the arm has no more cueing fluid. Okay, so the uh, silicone damping fluid, that's obviously long gone because it's dropping like a rock. So that needs to be done. The uh, spindle on the motor is filthy. It's uh, uh, got corrosion on it and uh, chunks of area where there's been uh, belt death right here we're gonna see if we can scrape that off it should come off and uh, we're gonna obviously hit these uh, pitch controls that uh, they don't even move like they just don't budge just completely seized so we'll get at that as well but uh, I'm gonna have to get uh, my jig out here and get this thing up on some two by fours I'm thinking one there and maybe one kind of here so we can support this and uh, turn it over and work on it. So let me set that up and I'll be right back. All right, we've got the turntable supported here. These cables are filthy as well. 
Um, that gives you a good idea of what's going on underneath. Um, quite a, a complicated auto return mechanism on this one. Uh, lots of gears. This really reminds me of um, a Yamaha YP series, the series, um, especially over here. These are almost identical um, auto return mechanisms and uh, switches. Uh, very, very similar. So uh, here's our motor switch here. Uh, this is our uh, main cam and cam arm here that lifts our uh, cueing. So we're going to need to get down here. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Not. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a job. So I'm also going to obviously service this motor. Um, I'm sure that is absolutely in need of oil. And um, I've even thought about maybe uh, changing out the caps on this thing. Uh, it's oh, you know, it's always you know a question: should should you recap? And uh, most of the times, I'll say no, just because it's not required unless the capacitors are faulty. Uh, but this one, man, I have no clue where this thing lived, and obviously, it lived in a very dirty location who knows if it was subject to humidity and temperature swings or whatever um, the capacitors look okay um, as far as you know just looking at them um, they're rubicons which are good quality capacitors and the main cap is a mtk um, don't see too many of those anymore um, it also looks fine i'm sure they all measure fine so I, I, you know, it, it, you know, across my mind, maybe should we recap this? And I'm, I'm going to say, not yet. Let's let's wait first. Um, service all the points that need to be serviced, and then you know we'll go about uh, seeing how it runs. If the motor is good and strong, it has good torque, and uh, at that point we'll make the decision whether or not we want to actually get into uh, a recap. But first of all. Let's get at, you know, the major service points here. And the first thing we're going to tackle is obviously our main motor. And you guys have seen me service many AC motors in the past. This one's going to be no different. It's your classic CEC motor. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And uh, we'll go about uh, servicing that motor. And... Uh, Pretty sure it just sits on this plate here. It's suspended. So it'll have a rubber suspension. Uh, so let's start by removing this ground. Actually, you know what? I could probably just remove that part. Well, yeah, let's do that. That screw is very, very difficult to remove, so let's do this. There. Okay. I do want to get this plate off, though. So we've got one screw here. And you know what? I probably need to remove that plate because that's... Or this screw because it is holding in this plate. So, let's do that again. long screws and one back here so I'm thinking this plate should come up now and bring Loosen these uh, wire ties here. Yes, holding this puppy in here. Nope, oh, that's it. Ooh, look at that, eh? Isn't that lovely? Wow. That's really, really, really nasty. Hmm. I have never seen this type of motor before where there's actual cap over the top bearing. I don't see any lubrication points either. 
Now to remove this plate, we're going to have to remove all these E-clips. And I do want to clean this off. There is a little bit of corrosion down here. It is noisy. Can you hear that? It's not bad as far as moving. So it's not seized. That's that's good. Fujia Electric Co. They made a lot of motors for turntables. Okay, so let me, uh, I don't want to bore you too much with this. Let me remove all these E-clips. And, and let me get this plate off here. And then we can get the motor. You seen that okay? Yeah, kind of almost not. We'll get the get the motor out of here. And uh, let me let me get this stuff off and I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Um, I've removed the plate here, pulled the motor out from where the mounts are. And uh, I've removed those two kind of crusty screws that were holding this on. I'm like, what is this? Uh, this must be a speed sensor of some sort. Because um, there's a magnet on the bottom of this uh, pulley here. And uh, there are some elements around here that are obviously uh, checking speed. So this is a little bit of a different design. Definitely uh, uh, higher quality design, probably built to, you know, Marantz's specs um, for what they wanted in their turntable, custom built by uh, CEC for them. So, but there are no lubrication points whatsoever on this thing. Usually there's a couple holes or something where you can uh, apply some oil or whatever. Nothing here. So um, we're going to have to remove these four screws. And that will just allow us access um, to this, right? So to get this off, um, I really don't want to pull this pulley off. It's painted. Um, I'm going to see if I can, you know, work around it. I, I may not be able to. I may have to tear it apart. But uh, if I don't, like, I don't like to move the height too much. So we're just going to take these four screws off. And, uh, yeah, it's not really going to allow us. to get this off unless we remove ah, the spindle. It's painted from the factory, right? So um, I'm just concerned about this magnet. I'm going to get a razor blade and just make sure that the slot in the screw is nice and clean so we don't strip it. And uh, see if we can get this off. Hmm, I'm not liking this. I'm not liking that I don't have a lot of depth on this screw. I don't want to strip it. I don't know if that moved or not. I put the paint there for a reason. That's obviously to keep it from loosening. Okay, I am going to work at this because I, I need to get close and get my head in there and that's going to block your view. So I want to work at getting this screw out and I'll come back. Okay, success. I did manage to get it loose. And here it is. So the magnet is part of that. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, 
you know, I'm not completely unhappy about having to take this off because now I can actually get in there with a scrub brush and clean this thing properly. I'm just going to screw this back in so it doesn't get lost. Yeah, the magnet's built right in here. This is a very fascinating design. See all the, uh, the belt death. Anyway. Okay, so now we can uh, hopefully service this motor. And I'm gonna, I don't think these matter as far as how this sits. This way or this way. Now they're identical. So let's put that aside. And now we have access. How are you guys seeing that? Seeing that pretty good? Good. All right. So can we unscrew this? Yes, but not without first loosening these. There's a little bit of uh, Looks like a thread locker on these, just to make things a little bit more difficult for me. These are probably very, very long screws. At least we have access to our top and bottom bearings. Okay, so there's one. Second one has the ground on it. And it's holding that wire, that's interesting. Okay. gives us access now to our top and bottom bearings and this ground cable came right off so we'll just put that aside for now there's our lower bearing cap motor is good and clean I have to say there's our top just go like this and uh, I like to put a mark for the top, so I'm going to put a little T here. Because God knows I'll put it in backwards. There we go. Yeah, this, uh, this top bearing bushing here is pretty dirty. But uh, we're going to get this uh, rotor. You don't have to clean the rotor, but... Uh, there's a little, you can see a little bit of, uh, of grease and gunk down there. So we definitely want to clean this. And uh, we're going to clean it with alcohol. I have a feeling that this video is probably going to go two parts because there's so much to do on this uh, on this table. There you go, away eh? like that. Pretty dirty. Much better. The bottom one's clean. It should be clean. Whoops. Just lost both washers on the top and the bottom. And we're going to all those places where things go to piss you off. Actually, you know what? Let's leave them off. They're just going to drive me nuts anyway. There. 
so that is clean. And uh, I'm just gonna give that a small cleaning. Yeah, got a Q-tip here. Just wanna see what we're dealing with. It is lubricated, which is good. We're gonna put some fresh oil in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, that's where that bushing is there. And around it is like a cloth. And that cloth absorbs the oil, right? Now, there are some people who say, well, you need to take that cloth out, wash it, replace all the oil. And, and that's all fine and good if you want to do that. Um, I'm just going to replace the oil. Okay, so i do that. Same with the top. It'll have the same kind of design, except the top is a little bit more dirty because that's where that belt death occurred. So I'm just going to clean in there a little bit. And up top here. Before we re lube it. I like working on motors like this. I think they're cool. Um, it's a bit of a lost art. Just want to straighten this out here. There. All right. So, what are we going to lubricate this with? That's a great question. And it's the same answer every time, just electric motor oil. All right, so here's our bottom cap. So what you want to do is just flow that oil in around the bushing. Are you seeing that? Yeah, anyway, around the bushing, All right? You want to get that cloth material soaked. And that will continue to lube the lower bearing. Okay, same with the top. Your top bearing is a little different. It's open on both ends, right? So, but the cloth is still there, All right? So, give that a good soak. Okay, and I like to put just a dab here. Actually, you know what? Let's replace these uh, these two washers first, because you know you're going to forget to put them back. And uh, see how this uh, the bottom of this uh, rotor has been drilled for balance. That's some high quality stuff. Stay in there. Very cool. All right, so we just want to put a drop of oil here. Right, and we're going to put our top bearing on. Lovely. And then we're going to drop the entire assembly in. Sorry. Actually, we're going to go sideways because that uh, little washer is going to go missing. Oh, uh, and look at that, eh? That bugger fell out. Hang on, let me find that. I'll be right back. Okay, I got it back in. That sucker screwed down before it uh, disappears again. All right, let's grab this ground wire. And I think it was something like, uh, it doesn't really matter too much, but uh, well, let's just do that. And uh, actually, you know what? Let's put our... our uh, Big screws through first. Mm 
right on there. We are sorry. Get our nut on there. coming apart and uh, touch that ground here get another screw this is when I could really use another hand All right, so let me button this up and uh, I shall return. Okay, motor's back together. Let's uh, let's work on the spindle a little bit here. I might have to run that with a little sandpaper later on, just a like 2,000 grit or something, just to take off some of this crap, because it's bad. See how it uh, turns out with a little bit of alcohol first. Yeah. This is nasty. Wow. Look at this, eh? Corrosion, grease. Now, what you don't want to do is get in there with a razor blade and start scraping because you will damage the spindle. So I am going to soak this in a little bit of CLR. That's a calcium, uh, calcium CL, lime and rust <laughs> uh, cleaner. I'm going to let it soak for a little bit and uh, it will not damage the brass. And uh, let that soak, see how that does. And then uh, we'll get it back on and then uh, we will hit it with some sandpaper if we need you need to man this is so dirty seeing that okay filthy so i'm going to soak this it's okay to do it with your fingernail because your fingernail won't damage the metal but yeah this is bad so all right well let's get this clean and uh, shall return all right so we got a, a little shot glass here full of clr and we're now we're going to drop our uh, spindle in there and uh, let it do its thing. I'll just set it across, I'll set it aside, and uh, hopefully it'll clean that crap off. I use uh, CLR to clean battery terminals for cars and stuff like that. It uh, eats corrosion, which is great. So uh, we really can't put our motor back together until we have that. clean um we can't put this back on though because the spindle goes on top here just to give you an idea how lovely this is spinning now i don't know if you can see that but it just spins it's beautiful absolutely beautiful really nice motor so this uh just gets attached with four screws so two mounting plates on this one And then that uh, speed sensor. Okay. Do you know that uh, I have not had to charge this uh, screwdriver yet? The one I bought at Ikea? I don't know if it's nuclear powered or what it is, but I uh, haven't even had to crack the charger open once. Incredible. And I use it quite a bit. Not just on the videos that I, uh, that I uh, film, right? So... 
The only thing I don't do with it is I don't torque with it. I like to torque by feel. Okay, so the uh, thing will go back on there, the uh, spindle, and then this sensor will go like that. This rubber piece needs to stay in there. And uh, I think what we'll do here is we'll call this the end of part one, actually kind of part two, if you consider the first video uh, part one. And uh, that was the motor service. Um, the spindle's currently cleaning. In there. I'm going to let that sit for a little while, make sure it gets good and clean. And uh, we'll end this video here. So um, tune in for part two. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, then move on to, uh, we'll do the uh, arm lifter replacement of the uh, silicone grease. Check uh, the systems here and we'll do the main spindle bearing. And then uh, once we test the motor, we'll see what kind of torque we've got and see if we have to uh, replace any capacitors and uh, keep working on this beast. All right, so thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.